Hello everyone and welcome back to my video series on the Terran Command Scenario Editor. And today I'm going to be doing a trigger overview of how the trigger window operates, how you can kind of manipulate and get some finer control out of the Scenario Editor. So, to start off, the way to access the triggers window is by clicking triggers. So what you'll see here initially is you'll see a root folder. I have a couple other triggers in here because this is my tutorial map. So that's why there's that other folders there. But normally you would only see root to start with. Now, to get started with adding a trigger, we need to do one of two things. We either need to create a folder for triggers to live in, kind of like what I have here or just simply creating a trigger. It is highly recommended to create a folder so that way you can help keep things organized. This is great for lumping in certain objectives or certain events, cinematics, or systems and processes that you have built out and keeping them all organized. So to start with the trigger here, we have a couple option here. We have the gear icon on the far left. This allows you to expand or collapse the trigger and its effects inside of it. The check mark allows you to determine whether it is enabled or disabled. The next box over is the interval. This allows you to control how many times a trigger repeats before it never happens again. Here's a tip. If you set this to negative one, this trigger will repeat forever until you disable it or conditions within the trigger are no longer valid. So for this particular tutorial, I'm going to keep it at one. To the right of that, we have the name of the trigger. Double clicking it, you can change the name. So we can say awesome trigger. And then to the far right, we have this timeline button. This is very, very important because there's a couple cool things you can do. And I highly recommend anyone who is an intermediate or advanced trigger maker to heavily utilize the timeline feature. And then to the right of that, we have the trash can. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We have a couple conditions and effects that we can do. So we can do, for example, unit status. And then we can select one of these warrior bugs and we can see if they are dead, we can do something with it. For example, we can spawn some reinforcements. So the way this is right now is if unit warrior bug is dead, then spawn rifle troopers. That's very simply how these triggers are going to work as it's very logical. You can read them out to help put them together. Now, this is where timeline comes into play. Let's say we have a very complicated trigger such as a arachnid bug attack wave. Normally, if we were to be doing a regular trigger without using timeline, our conditions, we could not move them around. So we wouldn't have anything here to stop this uh, or have a in the middle of the trigger condition check. We couldn't have any of those. So we can see here that I can't move this condition into all the effects here. But if I use the timeline function, then I can rearrange all of these conditions, all of these variables. So for example, I can make this trigger now read variable set arachnid supply equals 15. I'm adding supply 
to, or I'm making the arachnid supply equal to something. Then a bug attack wave, an offensive create will happen. And then a condition is going to happen. Normally all the conditions would have to be at the front of the trigger, but because of timeline, we can move conditions wherever we want. This allows us for some very advanced stuff. So after the offensive gets started, we're then going to check for its strength. So when the offensive strength, the bug attack wave equals zero, meaning we've killed all the bugs, then it's going to move on to the next condition. It's then going to check, are we still below a certain number of attack waves? And if we are, add one extra interval to the waves variable I have set up in a, another trigger. And then, because we have the interval set to negative one for this trigger, it's then going to repeat. It's going to start this all over again and then keep waiting and keep going until one of these conditions is no longer possible. So for example, we have a condition here that says if waves is less than total waves, keep going. So as soon as waves becomes equal to or more than total waves, then it's not going to go past this variable anymore. It's going to fail this check, stopping the attack waves from happening. So this is very cool stuff, very fascinating stuff. We have a lot of people that are very versed in how the trigger system works. So definitely check out the Discord for help and assistance. Now, one final thing I'm going to touch here with the timeline is just like its namesake, we have the ability to micromanage the amount of time for an effect to play. So for example, this reads as wait three seconds, then run a check or wait two seconds, then run a check or wait one second, then add one to the waves. So these are awesome ways for you to micromanage and micro control the timing of your triggers, not having to rely on a wait condition all the way at the top. So this allows you to condense your triggers. What might have taken you five or six triggers to do because you had to space things out, you can do it all in one trigger using the timeline function to micromanage and control the timing of your trigger. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please check out the official Terran Command Discord as well as my own Discord down below in the links down below if you need further assistance or have questions. The community is very supportive to help you with understanding the triggers and making your scenarios come to life. Thank you all and have a great day.